Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazaeus here from the Automator, and I got some great news. Um, you know, over the last what, um, maybe a year even, we've been struggling to find tool AI tools that write good V2 code. Finally, we found a tool, and Nazaeus is going to start demoing here. We're going to go into some of the how it does, and then some of the reasons why you might prefer it over other ones. But this DeepSeek, it's an open source tool, which is also really cool, uh, that allows you to interact directly with the browser for free right now. I mean, I think that'll probably stay free, it sounds like. Uh, you can also download it as a local LLM, but it's a it's a big model, um, so it might run slow in your computer. But um, And then there are API calls you can do, and so we'll talk about the benefits of the APIs and pricing and stuff here in a bit. Right. First off, let's uh, demo, let's see if we can get some valid code out of it. <laughs> exactly, let's see how bad the code is. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to, uh, one thing that I noticed as soon as I started is that I have this thing like solve reasoning problems it is disabled by default so i'm going to paste the code here see what happens and probably we can start a new chat with the deep think and see That's if there's a in there but but let's see how that goes so i'm going to use a prop that we have been using for many of our tests which is a simple v2 gui and it just says create a simple auto hotkey v2 gui that asks for first last name and age and location right and would display a message box with that information format it when I click OK. That's it, so I, I will have, I, I'm implying a button there. And this is the format I would probably have to ask. I, I think I forgot about that location here. Oops, it just sent it, okay. Well, I'm curious what it'll do, actually. Yeah. It, hopefully it, re, it realized. It, it actually did it, I actually saw it. So this is the code. Um, first of all, this is one of the spots where all the others fail every single time which is that they create a GUI in a variable called GUI, and that's invalid code. This one didn't do that. Great. Well, hold uh, on. Is this more often, most tools, they come back with V1 code, right? Yeah, that's the other Some thing. Some of the better ones, um, o -O -O one from OpenAI, right. it will make that mistake that you just mentioned. It gets closer, right. but it still doesn't time. do it. Yeah, this right. one off the bat nailed it. It did, it did. Actually, this is not bad code. This is correct. Then it's just adding a text field there and an edit field where you can type your name and just grabbing those into different variables. Then we have a button that says OK. And when you click OK, so this is a mistake right here. That's not going to work. Mm. But it's not bad. It did the right thing. It's just that it put quotation marks around it when it shouldn't. So I would expect an error here, but the funny thing is, that's a weird thing of auto hotkey, not that AI did a wrong thing. It's just that that's a quirk, I would call it. Because usually you see that for the click, you have to sure. put the quotation mark, yeah. but for the function, you don't have to. So that's a weirdness there. Um, so then you show the GUI and this is your okay button. So it gets the values out of each of the uh, controls that we created. Then it has a message box this is insane. That's this is the first time I've seen this. Um, oh, it's gonna fail, but that's interesting that it tried that. Yeah. Um, a multi-line uh, variable, a string variable that has multi-line, but then it's trying to place the variables straight into the code like this, which is not gonna work, sadly. But we're close to it. And then it's just going to message box the whole thing. So let's let's copy it. I'm expecting one error out of the gate, which is this guy here. I got it, right? So let's say I could just tell it to do it, but let me just do this for the sake of it. If I just get that out of the way, I think it runs. Just that. It just goes there. Now let me try the variables and hit OK. So I say... and I hit OK here, of course, I will get a, ver a problem in here. So, OK, no worries. Let's see what that is. So when I look at it, what is going on is that it created a variable called message box, which then will message box, message box. That doesn't really work. You cannot use a variable name, a function name as a variable. That's the first thing. And second of all, we don't have placeholders. So let's fix all this. I will say, look, three things. One, the 
okay the this part here don't use quotes for the function name. Second of all, two, you cannot use the uh, uh, functions names as variable, that name. And three, You cannot use placeholders like you cannot use placeholders like that. Personally, I would have done. I would have just said it doesn't work. Oh, okay, yeah, just like that. Right. <laughs> In yeah. my case, I'm just telling it what to do. Let me see what solutions it comes up with. So in this case, I just say you cannot use placeholders like that. But I'm not telling it what to do with that because I want to see what it comes up with. Um, but in your case. Totally right. I would say I would probably just copy the error pasted and that's it. And which is what our AI error tool does, right? We just send it to AI straight and let's see what it comes up with. So fix that problem here. So that should be good. Well, it went another way, ah. which is this one would work. So it just grabbed the word message oh, and then it. it started appending to it, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's just putting the variables outside of the of the strings. This should work 100%. So now if I copy paste uh, and I would run it and I would, I say, okay, it should work just fine. So this was very simple for me to get to working code. I remember when we tested this with OpenAI, um, I had to nudge it quite a bit. And then in the end, I had to actually just write it myself. Like there was a few things that I had to try over and over again. And then I was like, no, no. And I told it what the problem was and how to fix it. And it was still not fixing it. The fact that I just did a very small nudge in the right direction and it just gave me working code is way better. It feels like when we tried Claude the first time. Claude, when I did Claude, um, we did the, the the GUI. It started with a few little key errors. I nudged it a little bit, and it got there. But it was the type of errors like using the same GUI name for, you know. Um, this one didn't do that, right? So this was a very great uh, uh, demonstration of having working code very quickly and how in very small steps we can get um, it to return good code, right? So. On the other hand, uh, you you had a few images that you want to talk to, or do you want to say anything else before we move to that? Yeah, well, it, it's um, I I'd say one of the first things you note also is how fast it is, yeah. right? And and that's where if we go to we have an image on speed from um, kind of where we hit the wall, where OpenAI has has hit a wall, and here's the thing with when you study in the last six months ish how AI has gotten better, and especially the open AI, a lot of models have gotten a lot better. They're basically right. cheating, so to speak, in the sense that they keep asking itself, hey, did this is this really right? Like, you know, and they keep kind of doing it. And they do it so much where you can see here this, this new O3 model that's not out yet, but it's crazy. You know, it's above AGI levels. Like, it truly achieved it as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it takes a long time, right? And that's when you watch when we're using this tool, it's snappy. It's not doing that rechecking like other tools are. So I think given that we're getting v correct V2 code, that one flummoxed a bit. You know, it had a little issues, but the ones I did earlier, it was giving us great code and even adding self-checks to it. Um, oh, that, that was something that impressed me a lot. And actually, yeah. I'm kind of curious, what happens if I try it again with a deep think now? Sure, yeah, let's give so it a try. I'll start with a new chat, right? Yeah. I'll turn on deep think. I would paste exactly now, the same prompt. I would think this will do that rechecking, right? That's what the deep think. I would assume, I would assume so, yes. So, And it probably would be slower. I don't know. Let's see. Sure. Oh, well, oh, here we go. That's exactly what I was expecting. So now he's thinking. This is... Remember when Steven said, hey, Claude, write my pseudocode for me? Yes. Like, that's basically what it was doing. Oh, wow, no. Insane. Look at this. That's hilarious. 
That's insane. Yeah. So now that it was thinking about it, now it gave me V1 code. Oh. So that's just saying, hey, that's V1 code. I asked for V2 code. Right. Let me see. Hold on. What happened? Wow, but it is still looking at that. So, yeah, so but just that, say that's V1 code. I want V2 code. V1 code. Uh, fix the code for V. <coughs> Now it's doing all the mistakes the others are doing. That's hilarious. So you know what it could be, Isaiah? Maybe we were, in, maybe I was incorrect in how I thought DeepThink might be doing it. It might use a different data set and that it's applying it, and that the DeepThink might do that because look at that. Now that that's exactly the type of things that I was referring to that all the others did. Yeah, <clears> right. But that only happened when I turned on DeepThink, and and that's. Interesting to me, by the way. Uh, this was not actually expected. Here's the message. That, that these three quotes here, that looks more like Python code. <laughs> that's totally wrong. Wow, that's insane. But if I if I do it without the deep think, let me see if it makes the same mistake now. No, that's so weird. I don't know how, oh, well, <laughs> it tried again in a different way. Look at that. Yeah. It tried a few times in different... It, it is still failing, but not... Oh, well, look at that. This time it didn't fail with the button here. You see that? The only now, thing that it failed with was with this guy right here. That's interesting. And I don't know if... I We haven't played with enough to know if we can give it instructions, like, you know, create a project, give it... Give it you know, things to learn from to be using specifically knowledge, right? Uh -huh. How to build stuff. Um, I don't think that's a thing yet, but maybe at some day that would be nice. Yeah. Now, the interesting part about this, so let's say, okay, so I just noticed that it is doing better V2 code than all the others out there when I don't have the deep think on. Maybe the deep think is giving is getting more examples, like more data, more data from the web. And the problem is, the more data it has, the more V one code it is, right? So, or, or like I said, the the data that it uses is older, it's right? Just... Kind of, it could be. So the next thing was like, hey, what if we use it in our projects, and how much would it cost? Because you know we have these things with the APIs, and usually they charge you a certain amount for the API calls. Um, we did find that they are um, they're different. So, so we're looking at this particular graph in which we're looking at the price of um, open uh, AI's uh, prices, and it goes up quite high very quickly, yeah. which is the the cost per task. And and we wanted to show you this as a comparison to where we are when when I show you the one for Deep Seek. So. On the left side, we have $1, and on the right side, we have $1,000 already. <laughs> and depending on the score, that they, this is the same score we were having a, a few minutes ago with the, um, the AGI, kind of like the same score right. here of, out of 100. So the lower the score, the lower the price as well, it looks like. But as soon as you see O3, which they have been talking about, now you get this um, e extremely yeah. high price point, yeah. basically. And yeah, when deep, we look at deep seek, that's not what we found, right? Well, what they're claiming, yeah, is it's it's way over on the left. This one, this doesn't show you the O3 model because that's just too new. But the GPT four, you can see it there in Claude. Uh, they it right. does. Uh, what what they're claiming is that their pricing is lower. So much here at the lower. bottom, yeah. Yeah, way below, which is awesome. And the fact that it's fast. I'd still right now, from just a little test we've done, I'd still I'd still go to Claude for my V2 code. But it's great now to see something else finally also delivering. Because we tried Gemini that just relaunched with this new version, um, and even the O1 model in ChatGPT, and, and they're still not there. Um, yeah. and but yeah, this I, I tested Gemini like 
looking at my screen and asking a question, it was hallucinating too much. Like, holy crap. Yeah, it's, it's really annoying. Yeah. It's still right. got potential, right? But right. Um, very cool. That um, And let's look at some of the performance. that We have a graph on showing some performance scores, right, of how it's doing. Yeah, so we have DeepSeek here, the version 3 in this, the blue. Um, we have DeepSeek v2.5, and then we have Claude and GPT on the other end, right? So um, here for Claude, still outperforms uh, v3 in certain aspects, MML U. Pro. Um, they are looking at math and some of the things, coding and stuff like that, um, and other benchmarks that they have. But as you can see, still gets outperformed, not by a lot in certain situations, but in others, it is like it goes way above the others in, yeah. a, in a very, you know, high percentage, except for, you know, other as I mentioned, other benchmarks that probably are very unique to Claude, I guess, because it is outperforming all the others by a mile, you know, in that section. But um, for things, generalized things, most of the others are pretty even out. They're not that far off, but this model seems, or they claim to be above the others in a very high uh, level, basically. Yeah, so so give it a try. Um, like I said, it, now it is uh, based out of China, I believe. So if that's a thing for you that you don't want to use it for that reason, don't. But um, the fact that now we have an alternative to Claude, and I still I, I'm a paid member to Claude for the even both with the twenty dollars a month and using their API for a lot of stuff, right? Uh, however, we might switch our AI error detector to using this one because the price will be so much cheaper for people, and if it's so cheap we might just factor that into our price that we sell it and then people don't have to go get their tokens and figure it all out because it's right. just too complicated. No, and the fact that it is seem, seemingly understanding and creative V2 code that is better than the others yeah. is a great thing because if you're trying to, if you get an error in V2, you want V2 code, right? So. Yeah. So if that, uh, you learned something there, please like the video. It really helps us out. And you know, hope you guys have a great day. We, we discussed this earlier today in the Hero Call. So it's one of those great things. If you're in the hero meetings, you get this stuff earlier and learn all about it um, and have firsthand more specific training. All right, guys, all have right. a good day. Bye.